Today we're going to do a simple project. We're going to be reconditioning this mailbox. So as you can see, over the years, it started to gather some rust right here. So we're going to fix the, that simply by just replacing this part of it. That's only 20 bucks, it's not a big deal. And I know some of you might be looking at it and go, hey, it doesn't look too bad, you know, what's wrong with it? Well, it's got dents on this side, it's got dents on the other side, it's bent in here, it's chipped here. You get the, the tab here is, you know, the opening handle there is bent. And you're starting to develop rust around the edges here. So the best time to get these things off is now when it's loose like this. We're also going to fix this. So this metal ball was knocked off at the top by a cherry picker that fell over some years ago. So we're going to reattach that guy, get everything smoothed down here. Then we're going to prime this whole thing here with a primer coat, and then we're going to spray paint it. And it all starts right now. Hey everybody, Jeff here. Welcome back to our channel where we give you world-class tips on renovating your house, your kitchen, your bathrooms, and how to do flooring and tiles and engineering disasters and repairs around your house. And so today we're going to be working on this here. And I just wanted to point out something first. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, hey, what are you waiting for? Make sure you click on that subscribe button down below right now while it's fresh in your mind. And then click the little gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be notified every time we upload a video because you don't want to miss it any of our world-class videos. So today here, we're gonna show you a, a clever way to get this reinstalled. Okay, so we're going to be replacing the mailbox with this standard white mailbox that you find at all the Home Depots and Lowe's. This is 20 bucks. So it's well worth the investment because then you're starting all over. You're resetting the clock again and you have a brand new mailbox. And I just wanted to point out to you also when you're doing this, so curb appeal is very important, especially if you're trying to sell your house here, right? So as people pull up to look at your house, they're generally probably going to pull right up in front of the mailbox. You don't want them pulling up to see this old rusty mailbox. You want it, you want it to see very, very nice. You want it to show showroom new, you know, brand new mulch, brand new everything. There shouldn't be anything that detracts from the scene at all for your buyer. Okay, so most of these bolts that they use on here, these these are usually quarter inch. So I usually use my driver set here. And so we're going to use a quarter inch driver to loosen these. Okay, then we do the other side. And it just comes off just like that. Okay, so for attaching this onto the mailbox here, I'm gonna be using this as my, my PL Premium here. So this has been my go-to construction adhesive for years. I've tried so many other ones. This one does the best here. This dries the hardest. This also has the best hold of anything I've ever worked with. It's been very successful for us over the years at holding multiple different materials together. So we're going to use this here. All right, so just to show you a little dry fitting here, what we're going to do is we're going to put some of the adhesive on both surfaces. We're going to put some here, and then we're going to put some here as well, here. And then we'll fit this on here. This should kind of fit right around there, I believe, is how that sits on there, see? So once the adhesive is in there, we will then come by and smooth some in all the way around here to kind of smooth this off here. And then we'll let it cure for a while. Once it's done curing, we will then go ahead and uh, spray the primer and paint on this. So I will also put down in the description for you links to all of these tools and parts and everything, links to Amazon. And by the way, we get paid for any links that we send into Amazon. So if you folks use those links and make a purchase, we get a small commission. And that's what helps support our channel and continue to bring you these great videos. And we appreciate your support of that. Okay, so anytime you're using PL adhesive, you always want to make sure you're wearing gloves because you don't want this stuff on your hands. It can take over a week for it to come off. And besides, using gloves lets you get in there and get dirty with it and rub it in and do what you need to do without worrying about it getting on your hands. So right here, we're just going to smooth it around a little bit there. And remember, we don't care what color this is because it's going to get painted over. And PL is paintable, by the way, just so you know. And I'm also going to put some here on the, the globe. And 
I'm going to glob it a little more on here because I want to I want to really mash it down and sandwich a good solid layer of the adhesive on here between these two parts so that it will stick together nicely. Here. Now we just have to find where's that spot where it's supposed to stick. And that is right there. So see how it oozed out here? So I'm going to just take my finger here and smooth it around. So now we're creating a nice bond on the outside as well, a thin film that this thing will, that nothing will be able to break. So it's already thick and gooey on the inside between the two parts, but now you have, it's almost like caulking a baseboard to a wall afterwards. Okay, so now we have to come around the back side of it here and address this issue of this little fissure crack that we have back here. So we're just going to fill some of that in also with the PL adhesive here. I'm gonna put it right here. And we're going to smooth that in as well. So that when this is all done, they'll never know. This is, we're feathering it out. See how wide we're going on either side of the crack? It's just like when you're doing drywall. Okay, now coming around the side here, we're going to fill in that big kind of lumpy gap on the bottom there. That was left over from a previous application of JB Weld, which as you can tell, obviously didn't hold. So we're going to be trying this strategy this time. So we're just gonna try and smooth some of that out in there. Okay, so we've completed the reattachment and reunification of the ball here to the top of the metal post. And so I just wanted to remind you that when you're using the PL adhesive, make sure you have plenty of sheets of paper towel ready to go. Have them already torn off the roll. Don't, don't just bring out the roll and set it down. Because when your hands and your gloves get all gummed up with this stuff and it's dripping everywhere, you, you don't want to be handling the roll and trying to deal with it. You want to have a sheet just sitting there. So you pick one up, boom, use it, throw it in the trash. Pick the next sheet up, boom, use it, throw it in the trash. It's a lot cleaner that way. Believe me, you will track this stuff everywhere if you don't do that. Okay, so right here, we're going to be using the Rust-Oleum 2X primer here as the first coat. I might even put two coats on, we'll see. And you should let it dry at least an hour in between coats. And then for the actual top layer, the top coating of paint here, we're going to be using the Rust-Oleum Automotive Enamel. So I decided to go with a car uh, type paint because it's outside and this will probably be pretty robust against the elements. Certainly better than whatever nonsense they coated this post with originally because it's already faded and chalky. Okay, so we chose this one here, this primer here, because it's good for wood, metal, plastic, and more. But we're basically using it here for the metal. And it's fast drying, and it says indoor and outdoor. So that's why we chose this one. So here's the paint here. It's, it's a gloss, it's an enamel here, and it's made uh, specifically for use in the automotive. And so what we're going to do is, it says on the, on the can here, that if you're using Rust-Oleum primer, that you don't need to wait, that you can spray this on immediately after spraying the primer. But just the same, I'm going to let the primer dry for an hour first. So what we've done here is to protect the grass around the bottom of the mill post here, what we've done is we've cut up some paper here and we've just have it weighed down. Now, depending on the condition of your mill post here, you can opt to sand it with, if you want with the sandpaper or you could hook this onto your orbital sander and uh, just electrically do it. So if you have, say, a wooden post and you have you know, chips and stuff that might need to be sanded down or just some flaws, you know, that's how you would do it. Our post here is in pretty good shape, so we are not going to do any sanding today. We're just going to prime and then paint it. Also, if you can avoid spraying on a really windy day, you should try to, but of course, with your luck, every time you come out to do something like this, it will be very windy outside. But you need to make sure there's no cars anywhere near where you're spraying. Get them at least 50 feet away, or, or at least out of the way of where the wind is blowing. Because you do not want to get this stuff on the cars. It's real difficult to get off. You have to use clay and all sorts of detailing liquid and stuff, and it's just a real pain in the butt to get spray paint off of cars. 
Okay, so remember, before we spray here, you gotta remember, you wanna be between 10 and 16 inches away, and you, you spray it in a sweeping motion like this, because you need to keep the spray moving. You don't ever wanna stop and spray, or go up and down like that, you know, slowly. Because any, anything you do, other than sweeping, will cause the paint to collect too much in one area, and then start running down. You don't want any paint runs at all. It's supposed to go on looking perfect, all right? And just one final reminder here, move anything away from the area that you don't want to get paint on. If it's a valuable tool, camera, or clothing, or any, anything like that out here, just anything that you don't want paint on, you got to move it far, far away. So here we go. So you notice how I go right past it and then come back to it? See? As we come down. See how it's blowing? See where the paint is blowing into the background there? That's why you don't want any cars anywhere near it. Now I'm going to come around this side here and just kind of walk around it and get it. So you don't want to stand down line from it. You want to make sure it's blowing away from you, not at you, because you will get that paint all over you. Primer and paint, doesn't matter which. The other thing to keep in mind is you want to stop frequently during painting and shake up your can. Okay, so now we're going to prime the decorative area here, and the numbers are behind here, so that's why we have this piece of cork taped here, so we don't spray paint over the numbers. We are going to spray paint up here, even the areas where you don't see, because we'll, when we seal it with the paint, it will be protected from rusting. So again, the same sweeping motions, like this, see? Make sure you're maintaining your distance. A lot of people want to keep moving the can closer to the item. And don't over spray it. Don't keep putting too much on there, thinking more is better. All you got to do is spray it like that. And you're better off doing two or three thinner layers than trying to glob on one thick layer. Being sure to stay out of the way of the where the paint is blowing to. Remember, this is the primer level. You'll keep hearing me refer to it as paint, but it's primer. And we'll do the top plate over here. So in case you're wondering, what is the difference between paint and primer, and why do we need both? The primer, its job is to make the surface acceptable for the paint. It gives the paint something to grab onto. And especially when you're rolling paint inside, when you're painting an interior wall that's got texture, when you have that nice and primed first with a good coating of prime, the paint just rolls on beautifully. You can tell, you can actually feel how it goes on better. Okay, so now we're just spraying the bottom here. And believe it or not, folks, you will still find that paint will get underneath here and it will get in there and settle down a little bit on some of the grass. So you just want to make sure you give good sweeping motions here. And just rem remember to stay out of the way of the path of where the paint is blowing. So now that the primer has had an hour or so to dry, now it's time to spray on the, the Rust-Oleum Automotive Enamel. This is the white paint top coat here. And I still prefer to use gloves whenever I'm using spray cans, just because you're still going to get paint kind of residue all over your fingers anyway. So same, same way of spraying as we did with the primer. You just go right past it with sweeping motion, 12 to 16 inches away. Just get everything nice and covered. See how all of the paint is blowing away there? That's why you don't want any cars within 50 feet, maybe even further. So you keep spray painting back and forth past the item that's being painted. See. Now here, since the wind is fighting us a little bit, you have to move the can a little bit closer. 
can see all the little spots you miss. You just come back and get them, make sure it looks nice and evenly colored. You wanna keep shaking, stopping and shaking your can frequently. We'll get the bottom here now. Okay, so there it is with the first layer of paint on there. The first coating has now been sprayed on there. And just like with the primer, you don't want to try to overdo it. Okay, you're better off having several thinner coats rather than trying to glob on one big coat. And let me tell you something about white paint. White paint is very hard to hide items behind it and stuff. So if it doesn't look like it's getting completely white for you on the first layer, don't worry about it. it then the first layer never looks good. So you just let it dry for an hour and you come back and spray on the second layer. But you gotta let it dry at least to the touch so that you can come on in and pile on top of your established layer. So by the time we're done here, we're going to have a primer coat and two top coats here. Here it is from the other angle, looking pretty nice, glistening in the sun. Don't forget to spray your screws too. Make sure they're nice and white. Okay, it's been about an hour, so it's time for the second layer, the second top coat of paint. And you just simply reverse the steps you used to remove it in the first place. But we're gonna slide it right over the bracket where it was before, and those same holes will align because these are standard metal boxes here. And we're just gonna adjust the box until it's aligned with our holes here. And if you recall, these are the screws that I just got done painting. Now normally these don't come with new screws. I don't know why they don't, I wish they did, but I guess the manufacturers are just being super, super cheap. Tighten the two screws on the other side. And this is looking really gorgeous because when you start off with a brand new mailbox, it's all nice and shiny. There's not a mark on it. And you tighten in those brand new painted screws, everything just looks perfect. Well, it looks like we have a nice successful reconditioning going on here. This looks absolutely perfect now. So if you found this video useful, hey, do yourself a favor. If you really want to up your game with home repairs and home remodeling and everything, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below. And then make sure you click on the gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be alerted every single time we upload a new video. Hey, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope this helped you out and we'll see you on the next one.